Welcome to Daily Message. My name is Anna Ervolino, and I'll be bringing you the message today. Um, pray you find yourself comfortable. Um, I'm in my home, excited to be with you wherever you are. I have a word today that has been burning in me um, for quite some time. I actually shared this um, about a year or so ago, and it is so fresh still for this hour that we find ourselves in. Our text will be out of Malachi 4, 6, and I want to read it to you. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Now, before you tune out, if you're single and saying, hey, I'm not a parent, this is not just a message to parents, but to the spirit of Elisha, which is one that turns hearts. It's a reconciliation. It's prodigals returning. It's something happening in the family that the spirit of Elisha is pouring out and is going to move. This is a, when I, I was like, well, what does the spirit of Elisha mean? What is that spirit like? Uh, I looked into it a little bit and I saw a, a humble guy. I saw a sacrificial guy. I saw a selfless guy. Um, this guy was a single guy who helped raise a widow's son for three years. That is the kind of spirit that God is going to pour out um, in this time. Be ready for the spirit to turn hearts and partner in this revival that's going to happen in the family. This is not just a message about fathers and children, but of reconciling people through hearts being turned. Did you hear me? There's a reconciliation and God wants us to partner with it, with that process. This prophetic word out of Malachi is telling us that before the second coming of Christ, the spirit of Elijah will turn hearts. And it specifically talks about the hearts of the family unit. It's also giving us a strategy that will, will be useful in what will be a dark hour. It is an unexpected strategy to restore all things. We may assume, wouldn't you think the prophecy would be say, would say something like, behold, I come to turn the hearts of kings or governments, or education to pour out. No, the strategy involves family. God's strategy has always been the family. Before any other institution was designed, God designed the family. It says in Genesis 1, 26, I'll read it to you. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. He said, have a family. And then ever since the family unit has been under assault. But this prophetic word from Malachi gives us a strategy that only God could come up with. He is not saying get a hold of government to usher in the revival that will prepare the way of the Lord. He is saying the spirit of Elijah will work and turn hearts. And it describes children to fathers and fathers to children. In another translation, it just says parents. The family unit reconciled. It's a wonder that we're actually dealing with a fatherless epidemic in our, in our world. And Malachi 4, 6 tells us that if the father's hearts are not turned, there will be a curse. We would call this the curse of fatherlessness. And we have seen the results of a generation without fathers in our nation. We need true fathers raised up. And to remind you that, uh, that Elijah, who helped the widow, was a single man. He cared for her and for him. Jesus was the greatest carrier of a father's heart, and he was a single man. Paul told the Corinthian church they had 10,000 teachers, but few fathers. Being a father and a mother in the body of Christ is a whole new level of commitment. And turning our hearts towards our children is action oriented. It's not just, um, this message is not just to physical parents, but to the father's heart and the mother's heart that God is highlighting right now, fatherhood and motherhood. You know, we have four kids and just this past week, this is just a little story about the turning of hearts in our own family. But our 13 year old son 
Does anyone have a 13 year old son? I feel like that scripture that says the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I do want to do, I don't do seriously describes a 13 year old boy brain, but he was just roughhousing with his brothers. And I had told them, do not, it's time to brush your teeth. Don't roughhouse. Well, they roughhouse. Someone got hurt. And so we had a conversation. It just didn't feel like we were connecting. There wasn't like understanding between us as mom and son. So the next morning I'm in my quiet time and, and God's dealing with me. He's showing me that, that, the the motherhood and fatherhood and how he's highlighting it. And even within our own family, you know, you minister these things and then you live these things. But so I wrote a note to my son. I wrote a note and said, Hey, I don't want to raise my voice. And I certainly know you want to be kind. Um, so I did something that speaks love to him and he loves to fish. So I said, do you want to go fishing today and get an in and out burger? And I said, circle yes or no. And he came out um, with that note in his hand, just sobbing. And just, we were so turned towards one another. And it was just like, oh my gosh, Lord, this is what it looks like to turn our hearts towards our children and the children towards their parents in a time of just really knitting us together. But it was action orientated and I had to go fishing. We spent three hours out on um, in a lake in Laguna Niguel, just spending time and turning our hearts towards one another. And even I remember when I was a young girl, uh, my dad took my brother and I uh, on a trip, just the three of us, though we had two other siblings and my mom, he took just my brother and I in a critical time in my life. I was about the same age as Jude, 13 or so, uh, maybe younger actually. And he flew us, this ministry um, paid for pastors to take um, little trips. And so we got on a little mini plane and flew out to a dude ranch in Wyoming. And we went on river rafting rides and we went on horseback and we ate barbecue. And we spent this week together, just my dad and my brother and I. And I just felt like my dad had intentionally turned his heart towards us in what would seem to be a very critical time in our youth. God is looking for us to turn our hearts by the empowerment of the spirit of Elisha. It's working with us to do this. Don't resist those moments when God is ushering in the spirit to move on us as families to turn our hearts towards one another. My dad did it. We're doing it. It shifted something between us. It may be easier when kids are little. It takes more intention as they get older. The heart turning is a sign of revival. Revival looks like a healthy family. Why didn't the word of God say, I'll turn the hearts of the educators or the hearts of the government? They have no power. These institutions, um, before these institutions ever existed, one that had God's divine plan existed, and that is the family. Listen to this quote. A house is built by human hands, but a home is built by human hearts. It takes money to buy the materials to build a house, but the elements it takes to build a home are far above rubies. The world needs more mothers than politicians, statesmen, or political activists. Because of the influence of militant um, feminists, millions of children are left to non-parental, outside-of-the-home influences. Lady, do you really want to reform society? Go home. No reform will happen unless it occurs there or originates there. No movement will move until it moves there. No law can stand unless it's favored there. No religion can stand unless it's useful there. God has a clear-cut design for the home, and we will either conform to it or reap the consequences. A family in harmony will prosper everything. And the prophet Malachi predicted the coming of Elijah, which was filled, fulfilled in the birth, ministry, and life of John the Baptist. John's ministry consisted of turning the hearts of the fathers to their children. His ministry will bring the reconciliation of the people of Israel with the Lord. A restored relationship with God brings a restored relationship with family members. God is so concerned with his relationship with man and man should reflect that union um, with his fellow man, especially within our families. The word family is mentioned in scripture about 396 times. This tells us that family and family members are obviously important to God. For that reason, the Lord has released the spirit of Elijah to bring restoration to this unique institution. 
And I am here to prophesy we are in an incredible turning of hearts hour towards the heavenly father and towards one another. Anyone felt like quitting lately? Anyone felt like a little bit defeated or relationships feel tough? Quitting the ministry or the path you're on? You know, Ecclesiastes 28 lists or Ecclesiastes 3 lists 28 seasons. For everything it says there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. The only season not mentioned in that text in Ecclesiastes is a season to quit. Don't give up, people of God. God is speaking his word in this pivotal hour. He's turning hearts and he's doing miracles. I was reading, it was in our Bible reading um, recently, uh, Psalm 127, and I want to read this as I close out. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gates. God uttered to me, I am doing something in your family, Anna, and fatherhood and motherhood are supreme to me. The Holy Spirit said, I've been staring at your family. The family is very important to the father. He's doing something in the family. It's a wonder that we've been home so much, so much togetherness, and it could feel like you want to push each other away. But you know, those moments when your family or your children repel you the most are the times to pull them the closest and let the Lord work right then and right there. I think we're so consumed with so many things. We're so addicted to our screens and media and the news and the fear that's pervasive out there. And God told me recently, you just head on home. You raise that family. You do what I've called you to do there. You know, we're going to stand before the father one day and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And I want to say, God, I loved them well. I know he's, there's also the, the talking about the gifts he's given us and the talents and we use those, but I believe he gave us our families, and he is in an hour of wanting to see motherhood and fatherhood, spiritual mothers and fathers raised up. Because, you know, I heard a pastor say recently, the great revival that's coming, many are going to miss because it's going to happen in the home and not in the church. And that bore witness in multiple ways, because I really believe a family in harmony prospers everything. So I know God wants to revive us and let it flow out from there. But I also know because we're launching a house church movement. And so there's a revival coming that will happen in the home and people being brought into families, people without families, finding a family in the house church, in your home. And God is going to do miracles there. Uh, I just want to bless you. I bless your families. I bless the reconciliation. I encourage you as your heart, as God brings family members to mind and, and just has a flow of, of you just being fond of them or thinking about them, even people you've been distant from, or maybe it's your own kids or you have a prodigal child. I want to encourage you partner with the spirit of Elisha that is being poured out to reconcile the family for what is going to prove to be the greatest revival before the coming of Christ. I want to pray for you in this area. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that your strategy has always been and will always be the family. Father, we acknowledge that motherhood and fatherhood are so valuable to you. So Father, I pray for every person watching. I pray for their families. I pray for the areas that need reconciliation. I pray by the power of your spirit that you would begin to turn hearts, that you'd turn prodigals home that you turn families and towards one another and there would be action and love poured out. God, and I pray this revival in the home would spark and fuel what's coming in the earth and it would spill out from there. We bless the family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Delighted to be with you today. Have a powerful week.
Thank you for watching today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you'd like to start a house church, either with The Rock, a four-square church, or with Solid Lives, our global discipleship and church planning ministry, go to one of those websites. Go to therock.com for The Rock or solidlives.com for Solid Lives. Click on House Churches and fill out the interest form. We'd love to partner with you to advance the kingdom of God.